as the years went by, one family after another one down Gracie Valley Road, basically, has said, I I'm too old to, to do this. Come and mow my uh, ground off. You can have the hay for just keeping it clean. So I mow 80 acres of hay that way. So I'm farming about uh, 120 acres. Um, we raise beef cattle and sheep. Uh, we got into the sheep, and I'm not going to call it a business. <laughs> we got into sheep whenever uh, my girls were in 4-H. Uh, I've got, I have two girls, and so when they got into 4-H, 1982, uh, we started raising sheep. We started off with uh, Oxfords. Uh, we now have, we have three breeds of sheep, uh, Oxfords, Border Lesters, and Natural Colored. Uh, these are Border Lesters, these are Oxfords, and there's one Natural Colored one stuck in there, and that first, that first picture, uh, here, right here's a Natural Colored one, it's right there. Um, Natural colored ones can be about any breed, uh, but they'll have a, a colored fleece other than, than uh, white. Okay, uh, my wife and I, after my girls got out of 4-H, my wife and I decided to, to stay with uh, the sheep for a while because of the 4-H program. We're volunteers in the 4-H program. So we've been volunteering now for 40 years <laughs> in that program. Um, <clears throat> we uh, love the, the program because it's, it's an excellent family program. If, if you want to have your children work with you and learn something at the same time, it's an excellent program to keep them in. Uh, so that's basically why we've stayed in the sheep uh, business <laughs> uh, so long. Uh, not because of making any money from it, but because we love it. We love working with the 4-H'ers and we love the program. So we stayed with it. Uh, the three breeds I've already mentioned, uh, Oxford, Border Lester, and Natural Color. Now, there are basically two types of sheep. There are hair sheep, which I think Tony's going to talk about, and there are wool sheep. Okay, wool sheep have wool. Hair sheep have a little bit of wool sometimes during, their, during the year, but they shed it off usually in early spring, uh, and they get rid of their own wool. Hair, uh, wool sheep do not do that. You have to shear it off. All right, now let, let's talk a little bit about some terms that, that uh, you need to know <laughs> here. How many of you know what a boy sheep's called? And everybody didn't raise their hand. Tell us what's a boy sheep called. A ram. A ram. Um, I give a program at the fair um, during the fair week uh, to about 1,800 kids. They come through about 50 at a time, and, and we, we do it for three days long. And, and so I always ask, you know, and I always have two, I always have a boy and a girl sheep up here in front of them. And, and I ask them if they know what a, a boy sheep's called, and hardly ever have anyone that knows. And, and I say, um, think of a Dodge truck. And usually somebody comes up with it then. So, so, because a Dodge truck's called a ram. A ram. Okay, now, uh, how many of you know what girl sheep are called? Fewer hands were raised. All right, it's like you and you and you and you and you. All right, so what is a girl sheep called? You. A you. But it's not spelled Y-O-U, is it? It's spelled E-W-E. -E. All right. A U is a, a girl sheep. Um, this is a bag of wool. <laughs> yes, it is. All right? Bag of wool. 
that's uh, about seven inches long. Maybe a little, mm. few of them are a little bit longer than seven inches. It's white as snow, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not white as snow. It's yellow. All right? If I rub my fingers on that, they're shiny. <laughs> they're not only shiny, they're now waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Lanolin. They're soft. Lanolin. Lanolin. Have y'all heard of lanolin? Mm -hmm. right, lanolin is, a na is sheet grease. <laughs> <laughs> right? Sheet grease. It's, it's extruded through their body, comes out, gets on the wool, protects the sheep from right. rain. All right? Rain will just flow off of this. All right? Now, you'll also find that stuff in hand lotion. All right. When when wool when wool is processed, they have a process where they can ex extract the lanolin from the uh, the wool and uh, use it in hand lotion. But um, this has a name. This bag of wool has a name. All of the wool off of one sheep for one year's growth in one bunch is called a fleece. Fleece, a fleece. So this is a fleece. Okay. All right. I'll get that out of your way. <laughs> All right. Fleece. So those are some terms that we really need to to know about sheep before we go on. All right. I, I put hair sheep on here, so I'm not going to talk about them very much. I just want to say um, that that hair sheep are a relatively new thing to our area. Uh, they've probably been around, what, 10 years or so now? 15 maybe. Um, but uh, they are generally a little bit smaller than wool sheep. Um, when the lambs are uh, sold, they're a little bit lighter weight than wool sheep uh, because their parents are smaller. Um, uh, a mature hair sheep ewe will probably run anywhere from about 130 to 150 pounds. And you sell lambs off at about 60% of their mama's weight. So you're talking about something somewhere around 75 to 90 pounds. So generally speaking, it's, that's what you'd sell your sheep, your lambs at. Now let's understand what a lamb is. A lamb is, de is defined by the United States Department of Agriculture. And they say it's any sheep that's less than a year old. So if you buy sheep meat in a market, go to the grocery store and buy it, it will say lamb on it. And you will be guaranteed but that's from an animal that's less than a year old. Okay? So we all understand what lambs are. Sheep that are less than a year old. All right. Do they sell uh, sheep meat after a year? Yes. What's that called? Pepperoni. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Pepperoni. Oh, Old hogs and old sheep. Okay. Uh, really? Basically, <laughs> with a lot of spices in it. Gotcha. <laughs> Made into a sausage. <laughs> Sliced real thin and thrown on your pizza. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, with, with hair sheep, you don't usually castrate or dock. They have a shorter tail on them, and of course, there's not wool on their tail. Uh, with, he with wool sheep, we dock them. Docking means taking their tail off. Take their tail off. Right? Take it off with one of two things. Uh, take it off with a rubber band. Stick that on it. Two, two to two and a half weeks, their tail's gone. My finger would be gone if I left it <laughs> on there two, two to two and a half weeks. Or you can use this thing. This is called a Berdizo knife. 
this is what I like to use because it's it's instant. Uh, you take it off in a couple seconds and and hold it on there for about a minute and take it off. The lamb will go away and start nursing on its mama and never knew anything happened. Uh, okay, so let's get to wool sheep. There are worldwide over a thousand breeds of sheep. Uh, in the United States, we have somewhere between 75 and 120 breeds. Why did I say somewhere between? Because I don't think anyone's ever really come out and counted how many different breeds there are, but there are a lot of breeds of sheep. Uh, there are probably 20 breeds that are, that are predominant, um, about 20 breeds. I'll name a few, Oxford, Dorset, Hampshire, Suffolk, uh, South Downs, uh, Shropshires. Those are some of the, the more common breeds and breeds that you'll see at fairs. See them shown there. Uh, but there are lots of breeds of sheep beside those, yes. Is it safe to assume that they weren't natural in America and they were brought from England? With the it's safe to assume that most sheep were imported <laughs> from somewhere. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of them from England and Scotland and Ireland. Okay, uh, typically uh, in wool sheep, a mature ewe will run anywhere from 175 to 250 pounds. A mature ram will run anywhere from 275 to 350 pounds. I've got a couple rams at home now that will weigh right at 350 pounds. And, and uh, there's, you can see him sticking his head through the, the gate. It's, you can't really see him very, very good, but uh, he, he stands up about like this. Uh, he, I can't hardly reach from one end to the other on, on him, uh, but he's a big boy. And you have to be real careful when you're around big boys like that because they can hurt you. Um, you never turn your back on one because they'll run for you. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, the reason he didn't have any hair on the front of his head when we saw yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's actually two rams in that that pen together, and they love butting heads, <laughs> and they keep the wool worn off of their heads uh, from butting each other. And you, whenever they hit, it, it's unbelievable. They're back up 10 feet and just go running at each other and, and hit and, and just, you'd think they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> but they go right on. Or, although I have had one kill that way. So anyhow, uh, lambs typically are sold, again, about 60% of the mama's weight. So they, they would be anywhere from 110 to 140 or 50 pounds. Wolf lambs are. Okay. Um, lambing. You said 110 to? About 140 or 50. Thank you. And of course, you're selling them before they are a year old because you want them on the market before they're a year old because they're going to be slaughtered before they're a year old because of the USDA rule. All right, lambing. Uh, typically, mm -hmm. I, I use that word a lot, typically sheep are seasonal breeders. Now that's not true with a lot of the hair sheep. The Katahdins, Dorpers, uh, Black Belly Barbados, some of those will breed any time during the year. And that's a good thing in some ways. Uh, and, I, and I'll talk a little more about that later. But uh, sheep are typically seasonal breeders. That means that they will uh, come in heat when the nights start to get cooler 
and longer. Well, what time of year do they do the, the nights start to get cooler and longer? In the fall. All right. So starting in August, August, September, October, and November are the prime breeding months for sheep. Gestation period for sheep is five months, 130 days. So if they get bred in August, they're going to have a lamb in January. January. Okay? So I've had eight lambs in the last seven days. Uh, so that's when the lambs start coming. Uh, I'll, I usually finish up lambing about the first or second week in March. Does a lamb produce this kind of wool in a year? No. Oh, okay. No. Uh, when, you, when you shear a, a lamb, and, and it's best, if you're going to sell lambs on the market, it's best that you shear them before you send them. And they'll have wool on them about that long. And it's called lamb's wool. <laughs> All right, so it, you've you've had not fleece. nice, real, <laughs> real nice uh, outfits made out of lamb's wool. That's out of that real fine wool. Okay. Um, <clears throat> All right. So if if they get bred in August, they have lambs in January. All right, September, February, and so on. Um, I usually lamb either close to the barn or in the barn. I know Tony probably doesn't do that. <laughs> do you? Do you? All right. Good. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, of uh, breeders of hair sheep just let them lamb out anywhere about and because. Hair sheep mamas are better mamas than wolf breed sheep, just to be truthful about it. Uh, they'll have a, a pair of lambs and have them up nursing, you know, in 30 minutes. And they're ready to go. Once they get that colostrum in, that first colostrum is like an energy form. And it gets them going. And they've got to have that early in their life. I mean, talk, we're talking about it with at least within the first hour, hour and a half. They need to be nursing, and, and most of the time, I try to get mine up and nursing. Or I'll even milk some milk out of the ewe if they're not nursing by the time they're 30 minutes or an hour, and get them to to take it out of a bottle. They need that colostrum, and it gets them going. Um, but I, I do, I, I lamb in close to the barn or in the barn. I've got a, a group of ewes in the barn right now that, that are having lambs, and um, I've got a few outside that, that are going to be later. Ed, yes. sorry to interrupt, but if you don't mind, so how do you, do you just look at them and you can tell by the... the, the feel, feel, feel their udder. Okay, so that, when they're getting big, me, that's you, the best place. you pull them aside and leave them in the barn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and and you feel that udder, and you can, you, when it, from the time they start forming that udder, uh, it's probably going to be close to six weeks. And you just you keep an eye on them, and and I try to get them in the barn, you know, like two or three weeks at least. Uh, okay. Um, once the lambs come. Um, I put my lambs in what is called a lambing pen or a jug. Uh, that's the common term used for it. Um, I think we've got a picture in here. Here we go. Right there. Right here. That's in one of the stalls in my barn. And they're, they're individual pens. Uh, they are about four by five feet in size and you put a, a ewe in there with its lamb or lambs 
and uh, leave it in there for three days and then take them out. It's a bonding period, basically. And uh, they're nursing good and, and they're bonded with their mother and you, then you take them out and you can put them out with the other uh, ewes that, are, that have lambs. Um, there are a few breeds of, of wool sheep that will breed year round. Uh, Dorsets are one of those breeds, and uh, there are a couple of Dorset breeders in, in our area. Um, okay, when your ewes get ready to have lambs, I'm going to have to rest, Sean. Yes. <laughs> okay, when your ewes get ready to have lambs, um, I like to supplement I, I feed them grass, you know, during the summer and they're out picking and everything. I feed them good quality hay year round if need be. Uh, but I like to supplement their feed a little bit with about a pound to a pound and a half of, of some kind of uh, grain or commercial feed that's about 16% protein. And I like to start that two to three weeks before they're going to have their lambs and, and keep, keep them on that feed for about five or six weeks after they have their lambs. So they're producing high quality milk. It, it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of uh, stuff away from their body if you don't keep them fed real good. So I like to do that. Um, do you supplement the rest of the year? I try not to. It it uh, it will cut down on your profits uh, tremendously if, if you supplement their feed year round. Uh, I try to keep them on good pasture um, when I, when they've not got lambs on them. Uh, let's see. How many tits do a, a, a sheep have? A ewe has two. All right, many times, not many times, seven, about 70% of the time sheep will twin. That's a, I think that's an average for the United States right now. We're close to it. Um, sometimes you get three, the triplets. Um, I usually have at least one set of triplets a year, sometimes two or three. But uh, that means that you've got a problem when there are only two bottles. So you've got to watch real close and make sure that they're all getting plenty of milk whenever that's the case. All right, feeding. <clears throat> we, talk, we talked about grass year round, if possible. Uh, in early spring, winter, and uh, fall, good quality hay. Um, talked about having uh, supplemental feed there. Uh, winged lambs. Uh, you you. I usually wean lambs when they're about 90 days old. Um, their mama's milk production has decreased quite a bit up until that point. I've got a few older ewes sometimes that'll keep milking another month or two. You just have to know your, your sheep to, to determine when uh, you're going to uh, take the, sheep, the lambs off of them. But you have to have ewe maintenance whenever you take the lambs off of the, the ewes. If you don't, there's a possibility that they'll lose one uh, udder or even both uh, from, from one thing or another. But uh, if you don't manage those ewes trying to dry them up where they're not producing any milk, you, you can have a problem with them. Uh, sales. Uh, I sell some show lambs. That's the reason we stayed in it, basically, so 4-Hers and, and others can can uh, have some nice quality uh, sheep. Uh, we have a 13-county co-op that uh, <coughs> this year is going to be selling, I think it's seven times during the year. They will ship a hundred or more lambs at a, a load up to New Holland, Pennsylvania, which is 
probably the best sale in the United States. Um, we have a, a you, you can take them to about any show barn, but you're gonna you're not gonna make anything on them by doing that. Um, we we do have a a uh, a place in Columbia that buys lambs that, that is usually competitive with with the larger uh, markets. Um, but we ship lambs about every other month. Uh, and ship them to New Holland, and that's where I sell most of my lambs that are not bought by 4 Hers. Uh, shearing, we shear in April and May. Uh, I, I'm too old to hold them like a professional shearer would. A professional shearer will take them, throw them on their rump, control them with their knees, and they're standing in this position, shearing, and I just can't do that anymore. <laughs> so a friend of mine built a head stanchion. This thing right here, and I just take a, one of my sheep, put its head in that, put a rope around the back of their head, and they'll just stand there and I can shear them. Standing up. Sounds like everybody should do that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's good if you're going to have wolf sheep. <laughs> All right. Uh, Wool sales. Wool sa we have what is called the Tennessee Wool Pool. The Tennessee Wool Pool uh, is held in two locations, one in Columbia and one in Maryville for Tennessee. Uh, you shear your wool, you separate it by grade, and then you take it uh, to the wool pool and you, uh, you sell it there. Uh, it is pre-sold. There are about seven companies in the United States that bid on it. And one of the companies get the bid. Last year we got 98 cents a pound, which is really good for the average that is for the United States. Uh, but uh, it's because that we pay attention to quality keeping it clean, and selling a, a good product. Um, parasites. I wanted to spend a little bit of time on parasites because parasites are, are a problem for some people, uh, especially if, if uh, you don't control them at the beginning. And I, I haven't really dewormed my sheep in three years. I've gotten, I guess, rid of the ones that are are susceptible too much to the worms and, and I've controlled the rotating pastures and uh, but uh, you have to be careful about parasites. Parasites will kill your sheep. Uh, there are ways of telling whether they uh, have parasites or not. One of them is called the Fumaccia method by checking their eyes. You can, you can look at the, the eyelid um, and the color of it will tell you whether they are, are wormy. Uh, worms take blood away so they get anemic and if there's not any color there they're anemic. If, if they're nice and red in color they're not anemic. Uh, I took a place on doing that one time but I haven't used it very much. I pay attention to my sheep. If they're if they're wormy, I can usually tell by by looking at uh, they they become listless. They don't eat. They go off uh, uh, their feed. They they're just things that you look for. Uh, they're parasites. Uh, and I guess that's about about all I've got. <laughs> <laughs>